All right, good uh, Good evening all. Sorry about the dark room, but there's a uh, noise everywhere else. So we're gonna get started. Um, so we're gonna keep going with our cookies, okay? Because there's a lot to it and I want you guys to, to see all of this. So let's go ahead and share screen. Um, the next part of cookies that we're gonna talk about, <clears throat> we went over the, the macaroons. Um, hold on, let me go ahead and let me get this started with the slideshow so you guys can see it. So we talked about the macaron, macaroon, whatever you wanna call it. Um, the soft dough, so your chocolate chips. Um, peanut butter cookies, it's kind of a, a mix between the two. I mean, there's not much, there's a mold stiff dough by hand. I mean, it's, it's not much different from the drop cookie recipes. Um, Macarons are one of the most popular, but all so I'm gonna skip that. So you guys watch those. Okay, went over macarons and uh, the chocolate chips. So the next two types we're gonna talk about are bar cookies and icebox cookies. Okay, bar cookies are like this. It's three or four bars of dough, um, length of the baking pan, so you stretch it out. They're sliced into smaller bars and then they're baked again. So these are usually baked twice, if not three times. So the prime example is called a biscotti which is like my favorite cookie of all time. The reason you cook these so long is because you're gonna end up, it's a soaking cookie, okay? So you, these are cookies you dunk into coffee, um, hot chocolate. Um, this is how they make biter biscuits for babies. It's the similar method. Um, another one is called an icebox cookie. So cookie is um, a rolled dough into a log, um, chill and slice before baking. And then butterscotch ice box and chocolate ice box. These are ice box cookies. Okay, so this is two different separate doughs that you roll together. Um, and then I got a couple of videos so you can see how these actually work. This is a simple no frills biscotti, says All Recipes member Jandy, who submitted this recipe, adding, it's quick, easy, and one of my favorite Italian cookie recipes. The first step toward filling your kitchen with the aroma of an Italian bakery is to preheat the oven to 375 degrees. Next, line two baking sheets with parchment paper. Add one tablespoon of baking powder to three and a quarter cups of flour and mix them together. Next, crack three eggs into another medium bowl and add half a cup of vegetable oil. One cup of sugar. And one tablespoon of anise extract. If you prefer, you can use one tablespoon of almond or vanilla extract instead. Whisk the ingredients until they're well- Okay, anise extract. Anise is like a licorice flavor. That's what anise is. Blended. Add the flour mixture and stir it to form a heavy dough. Now we'll divide the dough in half, placing the first half onto one of the baking sheets. Flour your hands and form it into a roll as long as the baking sheet. Press the roll down to form a rectangle about four inches wide and a half inch thick. Repeat this with the second piece of dough. Place both baking sheets into the oven and bake them until the dough is golden brown. This will take about 25 minutes. Remove the baking sheets from the oven and follow this tip from All Recipes member Anita Louise. Using a large pizza cutter, cut the baked dough crosswise into half inch wide slices to make individual biscotti. Place the biscotti on the baking sheets cut side up. Return the baking sheets to the oven and bake for another six to 10 minutes. 
turn the biscotti over to toast the other side. and bake for an additional six to 10 minutes. The biscotti will become lightly toasted. For a fancy finish, drizzle the baked and cooled biscotti with melted semi- All right, those are like one of my favorite cookies, but you see how long you bake those things. So it's a long time. Um, it's more of a bread um, bake than it is a cookie because typically cookies only take about 10 minutes total. All right, so these ones, I'm gonna kind of um, speed up the way this one goes. This is really cool how this guy makes these designs. So um, I'm gonna play this for you. All right, so you see what he's doing. Um, I'll probably skip through some of this, but he's making the actual cookie batter, okay? Um, once he gets the batter, the cream and the sugar, or the butter and the sugar creamed, he adds his, his, he adds his eggs and then whatever flavorings. The part I want you guys to see is how he makes the actual cookie shapes. All right, so once he has the first cookie dough, the cool thing about these icebox cookies is how you actually form them into the different varietal shapes that they come into. So like it said, let it rest in the fridge. This is the same batter, but he's gonna add a cocoa to it to make it the dark chocolate cookie, okay? Once that's made, same process. You're gonna lay it out in the plastic. You don't want it to get dried out. And this way you can kind of form it down a little bit. Let it rest, like I said, for an hour. That's gonna cool down your butter. Um, and then <clears throat> start kneading it. But you're gonna see in a minute how he does this. It's pretty amazing. That's why I sped it up. All right, see how he's rolling those out? And what he's doing, if you guys saw right here, see how he's got these plastic pieces on both sides? That's so he doesn't over roll this. It's all gonna be completely uniform and consistent. Um, and that's what you, exactly what you want. This one you see they're rolling, they're adding the, uh, the chocolate chips to it, rolling it out, and then you're gonna put it in the refrigerator, you know, wrapped up like that. And if you guys notice, look at this cutting board he's using. It's kind of amazing. So if you're making, depending on what you're making, you can use all those guidelines on there to make the proper cuts in um, forms too. Like that would be great for pizza dough. But see the guides he has, and he's gonna roll that into the same shape as the vanilla. I don't know if this is a guy or a girl. I've never seen the face. So yeah, let it rest in the fridge for more than an hour. Make sure your butter does not get soft. Nice. And they just put water on it to glue it together. So now that you have the two equal parts, use the, this is the same way they can kind of roll. Same way you can kind of roll sushi. You know, instead of using a bamboo mat, he's using this plastic to give that nice tight roll. It's gonna push out all the bubbles and all the air pockets in there. And then this one's pretty cool. You gotta see this.
This is probably one of my favorite ones that they do on here. You know, kind of wet it, that's your glue. And then crisscross, so you're doing like a, um, yeah, like a, I don't know, <laughs> whatever the name of that design is. Kind of like a checkered pattern. All right, then this last piece, this is kind of amazing how to do this. So you see how they're measuring it out? So they're measuring it the same size as this dough, okay, the, the perimeter, the circumference of, or diameter of it. All right, so then he places it on there. Roll, roll, roll. And then they refrigerate that one too. And this last one, They're, they all turn out really cool. So that's why I was showing you guys this. We wouldn't have time to make this kind of dough at school just because there's a lot to it. Um, if you guys stick around and go to the intro or the um, culinary one and two class, they do these cookies over there. Um, we just don't have the, the time to do them. We could do a cookie, but nothing like this. So let it, once it's completely done, let it chill for two hours. And that's, so once he actually has the patterns made, chill it for two hours, okay? That's the key. Look at that. See the um, pinwheel pattern? Nice. This one's super cool. You see how the checker turned out? That's probably one of my favorites. But that's how they bake up. I mean, look at those. Those are pretty amazing. Um, here's another tray of some. You guys can see in there with the twists and the braids and all that stuff. There's just so much you can do with these different cookie colors. Um, and people pay for it, you know? Like you put these spread out, people will kind of go goo, goo, you know, go goo goo for it. Um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so second, the next series that we're gonna talk about which I know we keep talking about cookies. Um, you have rolled cookies. So if you've ever made cookies for Christmas or Halloween or whatever festive thing you have to do, and you do the shapes, so using a cookie cutter, those are rolled cookies. So cut from a stiff dough, rolled out on a baking bench, um, decorated sugar cookies and shortbread. Okay, then the other one we're gonna talk about is a sheet cookie. So you pour a batter into a baking pan, slice individual squares or rectangles. Those will be your brownies, um, blondies, butterscotch brownies, those kind of things. Those are actually considered cookies. Um, and then I'm going to show you, you guys these because this is a pretty cool video. It's cookie season, y'all. That time of year where you're making a whole lot of cookies. Around the holiday season, is there anything more iconic than sugar cookies? We're going to give you our tasty tested sugar cookie recipe, complete with everything you need to have some darn good sugar cookies this holiday season. All right, so... Let's get started. So we're gonna make our dough first. We're gonna use room temperature softened butter. Listen, that is not melted butter. Melted butter is not the same. And we go, we want a really pale color, so that's why we're using white sugar here. And this is a secret ingredient. I know it doesn't look like cream cheese, but it is cream cheese. And this is gonna give us a little bit of like a savory flavor and a little bit of tanginess as well. But what we're trying to do is cream the sugar and the butter together. So if you're feeling a lot of granules when you stick your finger in there, that's not good. We're trying to kind of almost dissolve the sugar in the butter. So we're gonna whip these together for about five minutes. They're gonna be much paler in color when we're done. It's gonna be much fluffier. So like you'll see a visual change. That's just whipping in air to that butter and sugar. And then don't forget to scrape down your bowl to make sure that you are incorporating all the ingredients equally. So now you can see we've got a really great creamed butter and sugar. We're good to go. At this point, we're gonna add one egg, two egg yolks, and our second secret ingredient is a combo of extracts. I think like vanilla is pretty common in sugar cookies, but we are gonna add a little bit of almond extract as well. A little bit goes- All right, we're gonna speed this one up because I want you guys to, I know you've watched a lot of cookie baking, so let's go. We're gonna speed it up even more. So I want you guys just to see like, oh, hold on.
So I want you guys to see like the process of rolling out the dough. So the difference with a lot of these cookies are um, just the finishing, okay? So, and let's have on super speed and it's still slow. Same thing with these, you wanna get them chilled. Um, you have room softened butter so you can cream it easier, but it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing for the, the mixture process, but when you go to roll these, you don't want your butter melting or getting sticky. Okay, so like chill for two hours. If your butter's room temperature and you get it even warmer, it's gonna start to melt and your dough is gonna get super sticky. And then you're gonna wanna put flour down and other things to keep it from sticking, which is not gonna be beneficial to you, okay? Because it's gonna take away from the cookie flavor. So you don't wanna add more dough to an already doughy cookie. Um, what they're going over here is just like ways to keep, like you saw in that last video where the person put those pieces, like you could even use a ruler on both sides and it keeps the cookie from getting too thin. All right, so you have your chilled dough. I've always used a mixture um, of flour and powdered sugar for this rather than straight flour. So it still acts the same, has the same purpose, but it's not a bunch of just extra flour on there. So you see how they do it? Start smashing it down a little bit. Um, you're gonna roll this out, but you need to have it consistently thin. So you want this, that's why they use those guards. You wanna make sure it's the same width all the way through. So you don't have like some fat pieces and skinny pieces because those will burn. All right. So as you saw, and then the way that you think you can do it is just, yeah, there's all kinds of ways to measure this. They're gonna do like caps on the side and see how tall it is. Um, the key is if you, the easy way, if you end up doing this a lot is just get some thick rulers or even buy a yardstick and cut it or two of them. And then that'll keep your, your dough the same size. And then as far as cutting goes, the key is like they said, put a little bit of flour or the powdered sugar flour mixture on there. And you wanna get these things as close as humanly possible when you're cutting because you want as much cookie as possible. You don't wanna keep working this dough. Like once you cut all these, you can go back and refold this and re-roll it. But the more you work dough, the, the more gluten you're gonna develop and the tougher they're gonna be. So you don't wanna to have to overdo this. Um, but go ahead and cut all your pieces out. And then um, I typically brush them with milk before I put them in the oven, but I wanna see what they do in this one. This they're gonna probably rework, yeah. So they're gonna rework that into a dough. Okay, so now you have these. Um, at this point, they should, I'm trying to think what they're gonna do with this. Oh, they're gonna bake them. Um, but yeah, typically you would, if you wanna do like a sugar on top for a sugar cookie, you brush it with milk and then do your sugar on there. This one, they're gonna just um, bake and decorate so you can see how this works. Icing, all your toppings. Probably losing you guys by this point. But yeah, here's just the, the decoration part. So at the very end, you can come up with, this is just all your piping and filling and all that kind of fun stuff. So, all right. So that is your sugar cookie, okay? And depending on how you wanna make them or what you wanna decorate it with is, you know, all up to you. All right, this last video is making a brownie. So I just wanna show you this and then we'll kind of cut it off, so. We always say this, I know, but like these are actually the best brownies you're ever going to have. They're gooey, they're chocolatey, they're fudgy. Ugh, they live up to every expectation you think a brownie should be. We took all the tips and the tricks from the internet, from our old grandma's recipes, from places we'd worked to find the best recipe that we could. Throw out every other recipe that you have for brownies. This is the one you will use going forward for the rest of your life. I'm not trying to like toot our own horn, but like beep beep, you know? All right guys, as always, prep your tin. You know what to do, butter and parchment. 
So the first cooking job that I ever had was working for a pastry chef and he made these incredible brownies and when you start working in kitchens they always say like write down the recipes because you're going to forget them later and of course I did not do that but there are a few things that I remember from his recipe that I really wanted to incorporate into our brownie recipe. Obviously, good brownies need good chocolate. And the chocolate bar you want to use is dealer's choice. You can go for something really mellow, like a milk chocolate bar, or go into something really, really dark, like an 80% dark chocolate would work really well in here. We're gonna double up on the chocolate, so we're gonna use cocoa powder as well. Because we wanted a really rich, dark flavor and color, we went with the Dutch processed. You can use regular cocoa powder here, but we're always looking for that intense flavor, that intense color. The one on the left used regular cocoa powder. It's kind of drier on top and almost like too dense and fudgy on the bottom. We're adding a little bit of cocoa powder here. We're gonna add even more later. Espresso powder just does a really great job of enhancing any chocolate flavor in a recipe. If you're worried about the caffeine, you can get a decaf powder as well. It's not gonna taste like coffee or espresso. It's really just another flavor enhancer. When we add the hot melted butter to the chocolate, cocoa powder, and espresso powder, it's gonna help melt everything down and dissolve, which is gonna help keep our brownies really fudgy later on. Sugars, we have granulated sugar, and then when deciding between light brown and dark brown, the real difference here is that dark brown has more molasses, ergo more flavor. I don't even know what ergo means. Again, just wanted to knock your socks off with the flavor here, and dark brown was the right one for the job. And we're also gonna add a bit of salt as it brings out the flavor in any baked good. So we're gonna have six eggs. Always crack your eggs into a separate bowl in case you get any shell. Best way to remedy that is to use the eggshell. It breaks the surface tension and is the easiest way to get eggshell out of your eggs. You can start by adding one egg to the sugar just so you don't make a huge mess. Once you get it going though, you can add the rest of them. No big deal, you don't have to be like super careful like you would for a cake for instance. So working for that pastry chef, one thing that he did with his brownies was he would beat the living crap out of the eggs and sugar and really, really incorporate tons of air. So much so that it would look like a super thick pancake batter almost. This is what happens when you don't beat the sugar and the eggs. It kind of just falls really flat, right? The great thing about beating the eggs and the sugar is you create like a really solid foundation and you don't have to use a chemical leavener. And then you're gonna pour in that beautiful ganache that we made. Oh my God. Actually, so they're using the physical leavener in this one, like just the physical air inside there. Oh God, I just, I can't believe we baked these. <laughs> Honestly, like I could have just eaten the batter myself. I'm really upset that America can't get on the metric system, but like fine. So <laughs> if we're gonna use cups, always scoop and level to make sure that we had the right amount of flour. If you just take the cup straight into the flour, it's gonna be denser than you need it to be. And you're going to sift the flour and the cocoa powder into the mixture to make sure we have no lumps and just make sure that we're really quickly incorporating it into the rest of the batter. And fold. Because we beat all that air in with the eggs, we don't want to totally deflate that. So just get the dry ingredients incorporated as quickly as you can. Oops. Pour the completed batter into your prepped tin. Smooth it out to make sure everything's pretty level. And into the oven it goes. So these are gonna rise quite a bit. After about 20 minutes, we're gonna take them out. This is like my favorite tip of the whole recipe. Take the brownies out and slam them on your kitchen counter. It's gonna crack the top as well as evens out everything and you get a much more like consistent texture. These are the same recipe. The one on the left is not whacked, right whacked. Uh. At this point, we're also going to add a bit of sea salt, optional but highly recommended. It adds a little salty bite, sweet and salty, always good. With a lot of baked goods, you'll stick a toothpick in and no batter remains and you're good. It's kind of not the case with these brownies. You will have a good amount of kind of fudginess that comes out on the toothpick. Trust us, they've been in there for like 45 minutes. They're definitely cooked through. They're just fudgy. When they do cool down, they also will deflate quite a bit. It results in a really even texture all throughout. Again, I can't say fudgy enough. Like, I don't even like fudge. Little known thing about me, but these brownies are like insane. I need to cut things nice. They need to be like a good, perfect square. It's so satisfying to see like a perfectly cut batch of brownies, obviously. Okay. But you can also mix in anything that you yeah. want. More chocolate chunks, potato chips. Very nice. There's other options out there that are easier, but it's like one of those fundamental baked goods. All right, so that that was a very good way to describe the brownie. I mean, there's so many different ways I've seen people do where they put like a cheesecake in them. 
cheesecake batter, do cheesecake brownies. But that way I thought was pretty amazing because they just did the forced air leavening. Um, and they just look extremely good. I think brownies are one of my favorite desserts of all time, brownies and ice cream. So that's what I have for you guys. Um, <clears throat> there'll be four questions on these. Oh, this is still playing. There'll be four questions on these as well. It's not a very long lesson on those, but I just wanted to, wanted to go over them with you guys. Um, and that is all. I will see you manana.